Well, there are lots of things. I was always an experimenter. I, you know, how today's uh, people with the uh, maker community and Arduinos and Raspberry Pis build their own little projects. I was always involved with something that emitted a radio signal. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, it just kind of grew. And, you know, I would experiment with that. And hap- by happen chance, um, a friend of mine introduced me to a person who was on the air at a 50 kilowatt station. And they asked if I wanted to start engineering at their stations. And I said, sure, why not? So, of course, I got back into legal broadcasting, which renewed my interest in Part 15. This is Radio Survivor, the sound of strong communities. My name is Paul Riesmandel, and we're talking with Bill DeFelice of HobbyBroadcaster.net, and he's telling us all about tiny little radio stations that you can own and operate without a license legally. It's, it's amazing stuff, and it's fun. And we'll get back to that interview with Bill, and Eric will rejoin me in just a moment. But first, I wanted to remind you that Radio Survivor is a listener and reader-supported operation. You help us pay the bills to continue to host uh, the show, to do some travel, do all the things we need to do to be able to produce this show every single week. And that's four times a month. That's four hours of programming every month, but it takes many, many more hours every single week for us to be able to do that. That's why I'm asking you to help us out, to just contribute a little bit of money to help us continue doing what we do and maybe do more of it, to be able to do more original reporting, to travel more, to visit more stations, visit more conferences, and dig even deeper into what makes community media, podcasting, college radio, low-power FM, community radio, what makes us all so great. So please consider donating just a dollar a month to our Patreon campaign. It's a campaign where you pledge to give us a certain amount every month. And what that does is, of course, it helps to sustain and fund what we do, but it also lets us plan a little bit because we know this money is coming in. We have a station right on their RV campgrounds that people can listen to as well. Lots and lots of ideas. Yeah, it's so, it's so wonderful to think about. I mean, in this day of Facebook Live or, or YouTube, you know, like, everyone has the access to to these audiences and yet uh here's here's a way to 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 sort of do an end run around the internet giants who who may or may not seem as friendly as they once did in years to come to to the to i guess like to free speech and to uh the ideas of accessing your audience like we never really know what the future holds with a giant uh web company when it comes to allowing you an access to the audience that you might have built on their platform and to take it all the way back to this 20th century technology, this exciting uh, radio, which started it all in the first place, the first wireless technology. Um, I, I really like the idea of it um, being uh, kept relevant in, an, in, the, in, the, in the Internet age. So uh, thank you so much for coming on Radio Survivor, Built to Fleece. Thank you. I appreciate you folks having me today.